last week and this week we've been hearing from the prophet Ezekiel. And most of Ezekiel is giving a message, giving a vision, almost trying to stir up the people's imagination of what relationship with God should truly be about. And when you think of it, vision and imagination really is what keeps us going. Vision and imagination is that spark that most, most people really get motivated about, a vision and imagination. The gospel today is a favorite one of mine, for Jesus is trying to show the rich young man a deeper way that the rich young man was getting caught up with all of the commandments and rules are good, but we forget more than commandments, it's supposed to be loving relationship with God. It's that unity with God that the commandments are supposed to point us to. When you think of it, the commandments are just the least common denominator, huh? The bare minimum we're required. Don't kill, don't steal. How much more are we called to do? And that is where a loving union with God comes in. That understanding that we are meant to praise, reverence, and to serve our God with our entire lives. In the past many years, I was teaching at the seminary in Baltimore in moral theology, and it was all about uh, how to live as a good disciple. But the history of moral theology got so caught up with confession and rules and regulations that people forgot it was meant to call us back to a loving union with God, that the rules were there, but we're called to do so much more than the rules. All of the big psych people, Fowler, Kohlberg, Piaget, all of them talk about stages of development. And yes, little children need to learn right from wrong. Teenagers need to learn moral behavior. But once we hit a certain stage at life, we shouldn't be doing things to avoid punishment. We should be doing things because we're in love with God. We should be doing things because we want to serve and praise God with our lives' actions. The great uh, Buddhist leader, the Dalai Lama, His Holiness, uses this quote often. People were created to be loved. Things were created to be used. The reason why the world is in chaos is because things are being loved and people are being used. The rich young man in the gospel story had many things, many possessions, and he was forgetting that what Jesus was trying to say was the understanding of do things for love. Many, many, many years ago now, uh, the play the chorus line was very popular in the late 70s, early 80s. And one of the big songs from that play was What I Did for Love. And it followed dances in a Broadway show and how difficult they had to work at all of their training to get a shot, just a shot at maybe being in a show. And the big song from that stage production is What I Did for Love. What I Did for Love. And I think most professions are like that. Most people who enter a profession don't do it for the money. They do it for the love of the cause, love of a law, love for theater, love for teaching. They don't do it for the money. And many, many, many of you who have children and grandchildren, you didn't do it for glory. You did it for love. That song, What I Did for Love, is very very moving. And we can see as we celebrate our faith in the world that moral theology, what I studied for many years, is not about so much the rules, but remembering that God calls us into a relationship first. It was covenant before commandments. I will be your God and you will be my people. And then the commandments and the rules came into it of how one should live their life. So moral theology is really trying to teach us how ought a disciple of Jesus be living. 
and how ought we be living is that understanding of love. Jesus' open arms on the cross point us to that ultimate reality, that our purpose indeed is to give God praise, honor, and to serve God, not because we have to, not because we're avoiding hell or punishment, but because God showed us the way is to love first.